What's up guys, Jason here. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple and efficient automatic Minecraft Bedrock Raid Farm. This farm works 0.19 and on all platforms of Minecraft Bedrock whether you play on your phone, tablet, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, or PC. As you can see here, this farm gives a bunch of great loot such as enchanted books, emeralds, and totems of undying. This farm is also a great easy way to get a lot of XP. The materials list for this farm is in the description. The first step is to go to a pillager outpost. The pillager outpost should be at least 100 blocks away from any villages. Then place leaves on all ground that is within about 3 blocks of the pillager outpost. These leaves will prevent mobs from spawning on this area. By the way, it's okay if the ground around your pillager outpost is different than mine. Just make sure you place the leaves on the ground. Once you're done with that step, the area around the pillager outpost should be covered with leaves. The next step is to go to this top area of the pillager outpost. Then break this chest. Then place glass panes in this area. Make sure you place the glass panes at the same spots as I'm placing them. By placing these glass panes, you will be able to find the pillager spawn spot. Once you're done placing the glass panes, the farm should look like that. The next step is to go about 30 blocks away from the pillager outpost. Then wait for pillagers to spawn in the glass panes. By the way, if no pillagers spawn in the glass panes after a long time, try killing any pillagers that are around the outpost. If you don't want to do that, another option is to try switching the world's difficulty to peaceful and then to hard. After you have seen that pillagers have spawned in the glass panes, go over to this area. Then break all the glass panes except for the ones surrounding the pillagers. The spot where the pillagers are standing is the pillager spawn spot. The next step is to find the southeast block of the pillager spawn spot. To do that, first open an empty locator map. Then position yourself so the arrow is pointing towards the top of the map. As you guys can see there, the arrow is pointing towards the top of the map. That direction is north. Then turn so that the arrow is pointing towards the right side of the map. As you can see there, my arrow is pointing towards the right side of the map. This direction is east. Now turn until the arrow is pointing towards the bottom of the map. As you can see there, my arrow is pointing towards the bottom of the map. This direction is south. Since this direction is south and this direction is east, that means that the southeast block of my pillager spawn spot is the one over here. Once you have found the southeast block of the pillager spawn spot, replace it with a different solid block. It's really important that you place the solid block on the southeast part of the villager spawn spot. The next step is to break the other three blocks that are under the glass panes. The next step is to break these blocks around the glass panes. After you've done that, place a different solid block at each of these spots. By the way, you can use any type of solid block except for solid blocks that burn. A couple examples of solid blocks that don't burn are smooth stone or cobblestone. Once you have done that, kill the pillagers. By the way, if you get the bad omen effect, you can get rid of it by drinking milk. Then break these glass panes. The next step is to break the pillager outpost. After you are done breaking the outpost, cover this area with leaves. By the way, it's okay if your ground looks different than mine. Just make sure you cover the ground with leaves. After you are done with that step, the farm should look something like that. The next step is to go over here. Then place 4 glass blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then extend that 4 block high glass block wall all the way around this area.
Once you're done with that step, place a glass block at this spot. That glass block should be one block above this block. This glass block will push pillars that spawn over there into the kill chamber. The next step is to place leaves at each of these spots. The next step is to place four blocks over here. Then place three blocks over here and three over here. Then fill in this island with blocks. Then place four leaves over here. Now break these three blocks. Once you're done with that step, place a piston at each of these spots. Make sure those pistons are facing the correct directions. Then place an observer over here. The top layer of that observer should be facing this way. Then place an observer at this spot. The top layer of that observer should be facing this piston. Then place an observer over here. The top layer of that observer should be facing this way. Now place another observer at this spot. The top layer of that observer should be facing this piston. Then place an observer over here. The top layer of that observer should be facing this way. Now place another observer at this spot. The top layer of that observer should be facing this piston. Then place an observer at this spot. The top layer of that observer should be facing this way. Finally place an observer over here. Make sure the top layer of that observer is facing this piston. It's really important that the pistons and observers are facing the correct directions. The next step is to place four blocks over here, three over here, and three over here. Then place a block on top of each of those blocks. After you have done that, throw a trident at that piston. By the way, the trident can have any level of durability because the trident will never break in the farm. Then place a lever at this spot. Now flick it down. Once the pistons stop moving, flick it up. As you guys can see here, that should cause the pistons to move around infinitely. That will be the trident killer that kills all the pillagers. Now flick this lever down. That should shut the trident killer off. After you have done that, place a glass block over here and a stair at this spot. Then place two blocks over here. The next step is to place four leaves over here. Then go to the ground. Now place leaves from the ground all the way to that spot. The next step is to place vines on this leaf block pillar. Those vines will allow you to easily access this trident killer. The next step is to count down four blocks from this spot. One, two, three, four. Then place two leaves over here and three leaves over here. Then crouch down and place two chests over here. Now crouch down and place a hopper at this spot. Make sure the nozzle of that hopper is facing that chest. Then crouch down and place a rail at this spot. Now place a minecart with hopper on the rail. Then place leaves at each of these spots. That will be the collection system for that trident killer. How it works is the minecart with hopper will collect items through the trident killer floor. The hopper will then funnel those items into that collection's chest. The next step is to go over here, then place 34 leaves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. After you have placed 34 leaves, go back down here. Then place vines from that spot all the way to the top of that pillar. These vines will allow you to easily access this top part of the farm. The next step is to place one leaf block over here and two leaves on this side. Then place five leaves over here. Then fill in that outline with leaves. The next step is to break these four leaves. Now place two solid blocks over here and two over here. Then place a piston at each of these spots. Once you have placed those pistons, place a redstone torch at each of these spots. Then place an observer at this spot. Make sure the top arrow of that observer is facing that piston. Then place an observer over here. The top arrow of that observer should be facing that piston. Then place an observer at this spot. The top arrow of that observer should be facing this piston. Finally place an observer over here. The top arrow of that observer should be facing that piston. It's really important that all the pistons, redstone torches, and observers are placed correctly. The next step is to place four solid blocks over here, then place three over here, and three over here. After you have done that, throw a trident at that piston. By the way, the trident can have any level of durability because the trident will never break in the farm. Then place a lever at this spot. Now flick it down. After the pistons stop moving, flick it up. 
As you guys can see there, that should cause the pistons to move around infinitely. Now flick this lever down. The next step is to place a glass block over here and a stair at this spot. Make sure the stair is placed upside down like that. The next step is to place a solar block at each of these spots. Then place three solid blocks over here, one at this spot, and one over here. Then place three blocks over here, and one at this spot. After you have done that, place a glass block over here. Then go to this side, and now place a solid block at each of these spots. Then go to the back, and now place a solid block at each of these spots. Finally, go over to this side, then place solid blocks at each of these spots. The next step is to place a solid block at each of these spots. The next step is to count down 8 blocks from this spot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then place 2 leaves over here. Now place 4 leaves over here. After you have placed those leaves, crouch down and place two chests over here. Then crouch down and place two chests over here as well. Now crouch down and place a hopper at each of these spots. Make sure the nozzles of those hoppers are facing downwards. Then crouch down and place two chests over here. Now go to this side. Then crouch down and place two chests over here. After you have done that, crouch down and place a hopper at each of these spots. Make sure the nozzles of those hoppers are facing downwards. Then crouch down and place two chests over here. Then crouch down and place a hopper at this spot. Make sure the nozzle of the hopper is facing downwards. Now crouch down and place a rail on the hopper. Then place a minecart hopper at this spot. That minecart hopper should be under that block of the trotting killer floor. The next step is to place leaves at each of these spots. That Minecraft hopper will collect items from the mobs killed by the Trident Killer. That hopper will then funnel the loot into the storage system. The next step is to place leaves at each of these spots. After you are done with that step, place 18 solid blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Once you are done placing those 18 blocks, go back down here. Now place 18 solid blocks at each of these other spots. After you're done with that step, the farm should look like that. The next step is to go to this side. Now place 7 solid blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then go to this side. Now place 7 solid blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then fill in the outline with solid blocks. The next step is to place 8 blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then extend that 8 block high wall all the way around that entire platform. After you are done with that step, the farm should look like that. The next step is to break 8 blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then place 8 stairs over here. Then break this block and this block. Now place a stair at this spot and a stair over here. Then break these 8 blocks. Now place 8 stairs over here. The next step is to go over here. Now place 4 signs at this spot. Then place 3 signs over here. Now place 2 signs over here. Finally place a sign at this spot. Once you have placed those signs, place 3 solid blocks over here. Then place lava at this spot. The lava should flow like that. It will kill all the ravagers. The next step is to create an infinite water source. To do that, place a block at each of these spots. Then place water over here and water over here. By creating that infinite water source, you will be able to use two buckets to fill in all the water for the entire farm. Now place water in each stair. After you are done placing the water, fill in and break the infinite water source. 
As you guys can see there, the water should flow like that. The next step is to place leaves at each of these spots. After you're done placing those leaves, go down here. Now crouch down and place leaves at each of these spots. The leaves will prevent raid mobs from spawning outside of the spawning area of this farm. The next step is to place 8 blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then place a block over here. Now place a bed at this spot. Then place 3 leaves over here. 3 over here. 3 over here. 3 at this spot. 3 over here. And finally 3 over here. After you are done placing those leaves, break these blocks. The next step is to bring a villager over to that spot. If you are in survival mode, one easy way you can bring a villager over to that spot is by using a minecart and rails. If you choose to do that after you are done transporting the villager over there, make sure you break the minecart and rail system. Another easy way you can transport the villager is by using a boat and lead to bring it near the farm. You can then use a bubble calm to transport it up here. To transport a villager using a boat and lead, first place a boat next to a villager. Once the villager gets into the boat, attach a lead to the boat. Then walk over to the farm. To transport the boat up a ledge, place water. Then pull the boat up the water. By the way, don't walk too fast, otherwise the lead will break. If that happens, you can reattach it. Once the villager is at the farm, I suggest you create a bubble column over here. To do that, place a block at each of these spots. Then place four blocks like this. Then extend each of these walls up and ensure they are the same height as the top of the bedchamber. After you're done with that step, place water over here. Then place 3 blocks over here, 3 over here, and 3 over here. Then place a block at this spot. Now place 4 blocks over here, 4 over here, and 4 over here. Then place 3 blocks over here, and 3 over here. Now place a block at that spot. Once you have done that, place a button over here. Now go down to the bottom of this water. Then place kelp from here all the way to the top of the water. After you have placed that kelp, go back down to the bottom. Then break the bottom kelp. That should cause all the kelp to break. Then I replace this block with soul sand. As you guys can see there, that should create a bubble column. The bubble should flow to the top of the bubble column. Now place water at this spot. That water should flow like that. Once you're done with that step, go down here. Then place two blocks over here and two over here as well. Now break these two blocks. Then place a button over here and a button over here. Then place a stair at this spot. Now break the boat. Then push the villager into the bubble column. That should cause it to be sent up into the bedchamber. After the villager is in that chamber, break the bubble column. It's really important that you do this so the raid mobs do not spawn outside the farm. After you are done getting rid of the bubble column, wait for it to turn night time. Once it is night time, the villager should sleep in the bed. If the villager does not sleep in the bed, try breaking all beds at the village or villager breeder that you got the villager from. After the villager is sleeping in the bed, place two leaves over here. Once it is daytime, the villager will stand up. Its head should be in a leaf block. It's really important that you place the leaves at the correct spots. I am now going to do a quick fire round so that you can check and make sure I've made this raid farm correctly. Over here there should be this pillager spawning chamber. Down here there should be the lower trotting killer and collection system. Over here there should be the upper trotting killer and this collection system. Over here there should be the villager chamber. Finally up here, there should be the raid mob spawning chamber.
Over there, there should be the water, and over there, there should be the lava. I am now going to show you how to use this raid farm. To use it, first go to the lower trident killer, then flick this lever up. Now go to the upper trident killer. Then flick this lever up. Now stand over here. Once you have done that, all you need to do is wait. Pillagers will spawn at the pillager spawn spot. They will then get pushed off by the glass block into the trident killer. The trident killer will automatically kill all the pillagers. Whenever a pillager captain is killed, you will get the bad omen effect. Once you get the bad omen effect, a raid will start because this area is designated as a village. That is because there is a villager linked to a bed up there. As you guys can see there, a raid is now starting. All the raid mobs will get pushed by the water over to the drop chamber. The ravagers will get killed by the lava because they are too big to fall into the trident killer. You will collect all the XP over here. All the loot will get funneled down into the collection's chests. By the way, if you want to get more loot at a time from this farm, you can hold a sword that is enchanted with looting 3. The looting 3 effect will be applied to the trident. As you guys can see there, the raid has been completed. If you want to use this farm to defeat another raid, all you need to do is wait. You will eventually get Bad Omen and then another raid will start. As you guys can see there, another raid is now starting. Whenever you are done using this farm, first flick this lever down. That will shut off the upper trident killer. Then go down here. Now flick this lever down. That will shut off the lower trident killer. Whenever you want to collect the loot from the raid farm, you can open these chests. By the way, after these chests are full, the loot will start going into those hoppers. Once those hoppers are full, the loot will go into those chests. Once those chests are full, the loot will go into those hoppers. After those hoppers are full, the loot will go into that chest. If you want to collect the loot from the lower trident killer, you can open this chest. By the way, if you want to expand the collection system, you can add more hoppers and chests. If you choose to do that, make sure you place leaves on the chests. To access the lower parts of the collection system, you can create more leaf block paths. If this farm does not work for you, try switching the world's difficulty to peaceful and then to hard. Also, try setting the world simulation distance to 4 chunks. You can do that by leaving the world then going into the world settings. If you notice any raid mobs spawn outside of the farm while you are standing over here, try covering the areas where you see them spawn outside the farm with leaves. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to make this simple and efficient automatic Minecraft Bedrock raid farm. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out more other Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching.